So um, I've been doing a lot of reflection quite a bit lately, partly because of, at Bible study earlier this year, the topic of sharing our testimony was discussed, and partly because my job here as an office manager will be ending, and I've been thinking about what I will do with my time afterwards besides entertaining grandchildren. I have a strong desire to share songs that I've written that depict my journey with God. I find it most rewarding to share my story and songs, making connections with other people who can relate to my experience. While contemplating the story of my spiritual evolution, I discovered there are parts of my story I would have preferred to leave out because they were a bit embarrassing. This caused me to probe a bit deeper as to why I felt this way. And I discovered that these embarrassing parts showed the frailty of my journey and might help someone else. I have discovered that every group of Christians can tend to set themselves apart and separate from others. It seems to be a part of our DNA. When I was a child, swinging in our front yard on the swing, I remember a conversation I had with myself that went like this. I'll probably never be a saint because at the very least, I'd have to be a nun. And then I'd have to be a really, really good one. So I guess I'll never be a saint. I wonder if my tumultuous journey as a teenager could have been smoother if I had shared this internal conversation with someone who knew God and could have told me how valuable I was to God and how much he longed for me to know him. And that anyone who receives his son is set apart and holy a saint. But I had to learn some hard lessons of experience before I came to this knowledge. Years later, after I had come to know the Lord, and while I was working at the high school as an assistant special ed teacher, this was when I had kids, so I'm jumping ahead for a moment, I wrote a song about a female student who reminded me of me. It's called Beyond Your Senses. It's the way you fold your arms and stare off into space It's in the look of bored disinterest that you wear upon your face It's in the way you hold your chin the cool gaze of your eyes You've practiced it so well it's a magnificent disguise And I want to reach to you But I don't know how And I want to lead you to This love that I've found Raging and powerful Relentless and strong Yet just beyond your senses This love of God So this is how you hide your heart And keep it safe within The confines of these stone cold walls That you've built to hide it in Oh What is 
is it that makes a child choose these walls of stone? And what can make you change your mind and break them when you grow? Cause I want to reach to you, but I don't know how. And I want to lead you to this love that I've found. Oh, I want to reach to you, but I don't know how. And I want to lead you to this love that I've found. Raging and powerful, relentless and strong, yet just beyond. Yeah, just beyond your senses, this love of God. This love, this love of God. In my mid-twenties, I began looking for God. I wanted to know the true God. I had relatives and acquaintances who were Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, and I wanted to know what was true. My search led me to a Sab Saturday Sabbath-keeping church. This body of believers put their emphasis on keeping the commandments and holy days and frowned upon anyone practicing Christianity outside of their group. During my time meeting with this body of believers, I learned a lot about the Bible, and I grew to love the people. But after a time, the Lord revealed to us that he alone could keep the law perfectly, and our attention as a whole body was turned to Jesus Christ. Some folks liked this, some did not. I had been attracted to this church by law keeping, as in, what can I do to please God? My performance-based religion left me high and dry when confronted with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I was surprised to discover that I was uncomfortable even saying the name of Jesus Christ. This next song came together during this period in my life, and I would like to sing it in honor of the mothers and Mother's Day. It's called A Mother's Love. her life to her husband who helps to guide him and to lead who gives him joy in times of trouble who serves with faith in loyalty she molds the hearts of their children with constant love and prayer she never seems to grow A mother's love is always there. Who holds her hand out to the needy? Who gives encouragement and shares? Who helps the one 
stumbles A mother's love is always there She takes such joy in a grandchild She seems to overlook his errors She's always there to listen A mother's love is always there A mother's love is always there A mother's love is always there Realizing that I didn't have to drive 90 minutes to church anymore since Jesus was everywhere, I eventually became part of a body of believers that put a heavy emphasis on excellence in worship. I remember thinking at that time, worship is not just music, it's every area of our life. However, that thought faded to the background as I became involved in leading worship. A song that came out of this era is Because He Loved Us, and I'll sing that one for you. You can pray for me during the awkward silences while I'm <laughs> programming my drum machine. Because he loved us more than we can ever comprehend. He came to tell us about a kingdom glorious that has no end. Because he loved us. Because he loved us. He told us things that we had never heard before. About a father unto whom he is for us an open door because he loved us. But his message was too much for those here the flesh and blood, and in their anger they tried to stone him. Because he loved us, he turned the jugs of water into choicest wine. He fed the hungry, he touched and healed the sick, and gave sight to the blind. Because he loved us. But his message was too much for those ears of flesh and blood, and in their fear. They turned and left him. Yes, his message was too much for those ears of flesh and blood. So they nailed him to a tree and left him there to bleed. And there he died for you and me. Because he loves us.
because he loves us. He is our resurrection and our life. And when we trust him, we will live even though we die. Because he loves us. Because he loves us. Because he loves us. Thank you. As my time with this body, the second body of believers, was nearing its end, I began to understand that the body of Christ is led by. Jesus Christ, who is the head of his body. When the Apostle Paul, formerly known as Saul, was dragging Christians out of their homes and throwing them in prison and even consenting to the death of the first martyr, Stephen, Jesus Christ confronted him on the road with a question, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? Me. The Lord Jesus Christ so identifies himself with those who have put their trust in him that when they are being persecuted, he is being persecuted. We are members of the very body of Christ. This ongoing revelation led me on a journey searching for believers willing to meet together under the headship of Jesus Christ alone. This type of fellowship isn't limited to any day of the week or any place. It can happen any time and any place and is best enjoyed with food. I know you all experience this here at your potlucks and feeding friends. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. No, the head say the same to the feet. Because here in the body of Christ, there is no boy or girl. And here in the body of Christ, there is no black or white. And here there is just one new man. We are the members of his body, and he is our head. And here in the body of Christ, we are all dearly loved. Here in the body of Christ, we are adopted sons. And here in the body of Christ, we are all one in him. Yeah, we are the members of his body. And he is our head. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Nor the head say the same to the feet. For the parts that treated with more honor. Christ is all and in all. The body of Christ is not a Republican. The body of Christ is not a Democrat. Because here in the body of Christ, we are all one. He has erased earthly distinctions, and he is our head. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. No, the head say the same to the feet. For the parts that are we are treated with more honor. 
Christ is all and in all. Here in the body of Christ, there is no black or white. Here in the body of Christ, there is no boy or girl. Because here in the body of Christ, we are all one in Him. We are the members of His body. Yeah, we are the members of His body. And He is our head. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. So much has changed since I wrote that song several years ago, and I almost feel like I need to clarify, I do believe there's male and female, <laughs> boy and girl, um, but we don't look at each other and identify each other and judge each other on anything that might separate us. It was at this time that I came here to serve as your office manager and occasional worship leader. There are certain times in life that God seems to be flashing a neon sign, and I have two memories of this from this time period. One was a conversation with a pastor in which I somehow mustered up the courage to express what I was looking for. People willing to get together to speak about Jesus Christ and experience him together, trusting him to lead the group. His reply was that he had invested way too much in his education to consider that. The second neon sign was when a previous pastor I was working with was out on sick leave and a retired pastor couple came to fill in. In an initial meeting, the church council chair was explaining how church members were stepping up to keep things running, and it was a bit ad hoc. The retired pastor said, the early church was pretty ad hoc, too, before someone said, we got to put a lid on this thing. This song is called Containers. Effulgence of glory in unapproachable light, righteous and holy, unrestrictable might. God, you couldn't contain yourself. All of this glory. Had to find a way out So all of creation Burst forth from your mouth God, you couldn't contain yourself God, you couldn't contain yourself You had determined to rule the earth through mankind But then the serpent Rendered everyone blind God, you couldn't contain yourself So all of creation was groaning in sin so you stripped off your glory and you entered in God you couldn't contain yourself 
God has created humans as instruments to bring himself glory. He designed us as instruments to be offered to him so that he can express himself as beautiful music, fruits of the spirit, through our personality. The devil hijacked God's creation to express his own music through our personality. Discord, violence, the fruit of the sinful nature, which is clearly defined in scripture. We can hate the sin in us and vow to do better, but it is only through the power of the cross that we can begin. There, our sinful nature is put to death. Then, we can receive the life of Christ. He became a life-giving spirit in resurrection. The rest of our life, God's expression is gaining more ground in us as we continually say no to our crucified sinful nature and yes to him. He is doing his work in us as we trust him. This next song is called Giant Slayer. The God of Moses is a terrifying God. Assigning tasks way beyond our skill. And the God of Abraham is a terrifying God. The man requiring treasures we hold most dear. And the God of Job is a terrifying God. He grants that we may all be stripped bare. But faithful is the one who calls us. He will do it, God. Works in us. Yeah, faithful is 
is the one who calls us. He will do it. God works in us. God works in us. Trust Him. God works in us. The God of David is a terrifying God. He leads us straight into the giant's path. And Jesus Christ is a terrifying God. Demanding we give all we possess And the God of Paul is a terrifying God He strikes us all with his blinding light But faithful is the one who calls us. He will do it. God works in us. Yeah, faithful is the one who calls us. He will do it. God. God works in us. Trust Him. God works in us. Yield to Him. God works in us. <laughs> Thank you. Surrendering all of ourselves to God is a continual struggle. But I told the Lord several years ago, I surrender. And if there is any part in me that I'm holding on to, Lord, I know that you can pry that away from me in time. I trust you, Lord. One area of struggle that I feel the Lord is helping me with is my tendency to judge others. Only the Lord knows a person's heart and whether a person is ignoring the voice of God in their conscience or just not sensitive enough to hear it. How freeing it is to understand that our faith in Jesus Christ includes eternal life in him and that when Jesus returns, he will say, look, I am coming bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. That's Revelation 22, 12. This frees us from trying to figure out who is sinning or not. The Lord can handle it all. However, if we are not sharing the words of Christ, how will people know what he wants to speak to others through us? This next song came together for me in February of this year. It was pretty effortless, so I consider this one directly from the Lord. And I'll mention, in three places, in three of the four Gospels, Jesus, I'm sorry, I didn't mean in three places, in three of the four Gospels, I meant in three of the four Gospels, Jesus says, better to have a great millstone hung around your neck and be drowned in the sea than to cause one of these little ones to sin. The song is called Little Ones. Sorry, this one is kind of heavy.
Suffer the little children, let them come to me. For to such as these shall my kingdom be. For unless you turn and be like one of them, you shall not enter in what I am building. Better to be tied to a great millstone and be drowned in the sea than to face the wrath of Almighty God for causing one of these little ones to sin. A broken, contrite heart God will not despise, but proud and lofty eyes can never please Him. The eyes of the Lord wander to and fro, searching for those with hearts turned to Him. The least will be first, and the first the least. God is not mocked, what sown is reaped. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand. The blood of Jesus Christ will cover every sin. is God after in all this? What is he doing? Does he have a purpose? In the letter to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul reveals God's purpose. I encourage you to spend some time in the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1 through 3. In chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, we read, God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus our Lord. God wants to shame his enemy by continuing to get what he planned from the beginning, despite what his enemy has done and is doing to try to circumvent his purpose. Again, to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Look around this room. God has showered his wisdom on us, 
on this rich variety of people. And he is displaying it in the unseen realm. We don't look like much. But what God sees when he looks at us is his son. Because he dwells in every believing heart. This next song is addressed to Sleeping Beauty. This is the bride of Christ, the church, you and me. God is awakening us to his eternal purpose for us in Christ. Sleeping Beauty, do you know who you are? The King of Glory has set you free from all duty and religious law. He is your rest for eternity. Sleeping Beauty, pearl of great price, sought and bought with the blood of the Lamb, pure and holy, blameless in His sight, you will become who you really are. For what more can your Lord do? He has given all He Lay your life down, receive what he gives, for he wants to be known and made known in you. Sleeping beauty in you is displayed, God's great wisdom to unseen realms for this he purposed from eternity accomplished through Jesus Christ in you for what more can your Lord do he has given all he Lay your life down, receive what he gives, for he wants to be known and made known in you. Sleeping beauty, do you know who you are? Sleeping beauty, do you know who you are? This is Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 14 through 19. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width what is the length? 
What is the depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God that you may be filled with all the fullness that you may be filled with all the fullness that you may be filled with all the fullness of God The Apostle Paul continues. Now, all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, I a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one God and Father of all, who is over all and in all and living through all. And he will draw our hearts together. His love in us will grow. As we begin to see who he is in us, all glory to God. Our God lives and reigns in us, and he is one. His unity will be displayed on earth. As his body sees who he is dwelling in each one, we are his body on this earth. And he will draw our hearts together. His love in us will grow. As we begin to see who he is in us, all glory to God. Centuries of splitting and dividing have watered down our testimony of Jesus Christ on earth. But greater is the one who dwells in us, and he is one. Jesus Christ cannot be divided. And he will draw our hearts together. His love in us will grow. As we begin to see who he is in us, all glory to God. Divide and conquer. The enemy has underestimated the power of our God. 
God is crushing him under our feet. And he is drawing our hearts together. His love in us is growing. As we begin to see who he is in us, all glory to God. And he will draw our hearts together. His love in us will grow. As we begin to see who he is in us, all glory to God. All glory to God. All glory to God. Let's keep asking the Lord for the ability to speak his words and be ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my music and my story. I hope you find encouragement in it. If there's anything you disagreed with, I'd love to hear that too. So have a wonderful day. <laughs>